These videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. There's a link to my website in the info box. The address is www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos dot htm. Or you can just use the link in the info box. Thank you. What's the symbol for charge? Uh, Q. And what's the unit for charge? Coulomb. Or what's the symbol for electric field? Uh, e. And what's the unit for electric field? Good, that's good that you know that. That's a very important unit. Is electric field a vector or a scalar? It's a scalar. No. <laughs> Sorry, it's a vector. Which one? This one. Um, scalar. Have we ever had to learn any ways of figuring out the direction for electric field? Looks like you're maybe not sure about that. Yeah. Why don't you take out the handout on electric field and force and refresh your memory on that? So does that handout give us any information about how to find the direction of the electric field? For example, if you had a positive source charge, <clears throat> what would that tell you about the direction of the electric field? Um, that it's opposite, or that it's equal to the direction of the force. Why don't we uh, take a second to, to think about that. Okay. Now you're looking at that handout, oh, which basically has two different portions. So if it's a positive Q, then the electric field is pointed away from the positive. That's right, yeah. So that has, that handout has two different portions. One portion tells us how the source charge creates the electric field, and the other portion tells us how the electric field creates a force on the test charge, and it's very easy to get the left-hand portion confused with the right-hand portion. So what we were talking about a second ago was how does the source charge create the electric field? I think now you're in looking at the right part of the handout. If you have a positive source charge, that creates an electric field that points away from the source charge. And for a negative source charge, the electric field points towards the source charge, I think I talked about those directions here on top of this arrow. Now, what you were looking at a second ago, there's also ways to connect the direction of the electric field and the direction of the electric force on the test charge. Well, that's the information over this arrow. We want to keep those two things separate in our mind. One of the biggest mistakes that students make is they kind of use the wrong half of the flow chart for the wrong type of problem. Well, all right, why were we talking about this? Well, so what did we decide? Did we decide that electric field has a direction or doesn't have a direction? So should it be a vector or a scalar? Okay. That's right. Moving on here to the force, what, what's the symbol for the electric force? Um, F. Yeah. Any force we can call F. That's good. Now, today we're going to start talking about magnetic forces. So we're going to need a way to distinguish the magnetic and the electric forces so if there's a problem that has both electric and magnetic forces at the same time, it's good to put an E in for the force for the electric force. What is the unit for electric force? Because it's a force. And is electric force a vector or a scalar? It's a vector. Because it's a force. And this should have been the other way that should have made it, should have allowed us to figure out that this was a vector. Remember that the electric field is generating the electric force. So it makes sense that if this is a vector, this will be a vector too. Or anyway, that, that's at least a mnemonic. Because these are a pair of concepts, it makes sense that they should both be the same type of thing. Instead of thinking of the electric field creating a force, we can also think of it as creating an electric potential. Do you remember, what's the symbol for electric potential? Um, v. Good, capital V. And what is the unit for electric potential? Volts. Good. 
But we know that a volt has subunits. What are the subunits for electric potential? That's the exact point that I wanted to bring up. So uh, just as you're noticing, I wanted to bring up the idea that just like the electric field determines the electric force, the electric potential determines the electric potential energy. What's the symbol for the electric potential energy? Yeah. Yeah. And what's the unit for that? Sure. Because it's a type of energy. Well, then we can use a kind of analogy here. Just like we can go from force in newtons to electric field in newtons per coulomb, well, we could go from electric potential energy in joules to electric potential in joules per coulomb. So it's always a good idea to keep going back and seeing the relationship between electric field and force and seeing how that's similar to the relationship between electric potential and potential energy. For example, last week we were looking at circuits. Let's say this is a 12-volt battery. It's the kind of battery you can uh, uh, often say buy at the store. What does it mean if we say this is a 12 volt battery? What does that tell us about the battery? Um, that there's 12 volts uh, electric potential circling through the battery? Let's try to be more specific. Let's try to use the units to help us interpret that. Do you remember what are the subunits for a volt? Um, so there's 12 joules. Or per one, per one coulomb, there's 12 joules of potential, electric potential energy. Good. Traveling through the battery. Good. What, what does that tell us, tell us more precisely about the battery, though? That to get from, like, one from the bottom of the battery to the top, it takes 12 joules of, of potential energy. Okay, good. Remember, we could think of this long line as the positive terminal, and this is the negative terminal. Um, and what this does is it, um, we can think of the, conventionally, we think of the current as positive charges. So we can think of this as moving positive charges from here to here. Now, you would think positive charges don't want to move up here, because this is a positive terminal. Um, so they're going to be gaining potential energy when they're moved up there. Remember that when something goes where it doesn't want to go, it's gaining potential energy. Just like if I move this chalk up, it's gained gravitational energy. So, why are, these, why are these moving up if they don't want to go there? Because the battery is doing work to move them up there. The battery is using its chemical energy to move the charges where they don't want to go. The battery is forcing the charges to go where they don't want to go. But this tells us that every time the battery moves one coulomb of charge between the terminals, it's giving that one coulomb 12 extra joules of potential energy, which means it must be doing 12 joules of work in order to do that. That means that uh, in this case, simple circuit, when that one coulomb of charge falls through this resistor, it's going to have to lose 12 joules of potential energy so that at the end of the loop, it can come back to where it started. I just wanted to uh, illustrate again why it's so useful to know what a volt is, because that's the only way we can understand what it means for a battery to be, say, 12 volts. Remember that usually we focus not on the potential, but the change in the potential. What we're saying here is that the difference in potential between the terminals is 12 volts. One of the concepts that students tend to have the least intuition for in this course is volts and voltage. But if we remember that they're joules per coulomb, that can help us to understand what they mean. Another concept we've seen is electric flux. Do you remember what the symbol is for electric flux? Um, yeah, it's the, the S with the circle. Like this? Oh, actually, sorry, it's the I with the circle. Like this? Yeah, that's right. I haven't thought of that as an I with a circle before, but that, that's not far off. So this is the Greek letter phi. Uh -huh. It's not quite the right way to, to draw it, but all of a sudden I'm blanking.
can't do is deny it with the circle. Yeah, that's pretty much right. What you said is uh, the way to draw that. Okay. And to help us remember that, well, this is the Greek letter phi. Well, phi has an F sound and flux has an F sound. Now remember that if you have a changing electric field, there's a, form, a complicated formula involving an integral. But if you have a uniform electric field that is perpendicular to the surface, there's a simple formula for calculating the electric flux. 